Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this, another episode of 97th Heaven. Now tonight we're going to be looking at WWF Final Four from 1997. An interesting show because like with a lot of the In Your House shows from 1997, I've never seen this one before, so was genuinely looking forward to watching this one. Um, just before I go on, a little word of explanation. I haven't done a vid for ages, or what feels like for ages, because it was um, it was my and my girlfriend's um, anniversary this weekend, so I, um, I went to see Russell Howard live on um, on Saturday night at Manchester MEN Arena which was brilliant and then like I say it was our anniversary on Sunday so uh, yeah um, making YouTube vids falls way <laughs> down the priority we've been together eight years would you believe fucking Christ unbelievable so let's get on with it shall we we just there's two things missing I should always do this before we start but that's the window open and ah yes Gotta love some Blackthorn, haven't you? Just a nice and liquid refreshment. So, since the Royal Rumble in January, um, there was an episode of Raw, a special episode on, on Thursday night called Thursday Raw Thursday. No, I don't agree that that's a very catchy name at all, is it? So, two things of notes have happened on um, on this show. The first one is that a young Rocky Maya Villa had won the Intercontinental Championship from some guy that we're never going to hear of again called Triple H, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Matches are available on the Rock DVD if you fancy watching it. That's significant, I suppose, because... You know, it was Rocky's first championship. The other thing of significance that happened on the Thursday Raw Thursday show is that Shawn Michaels vacated the WWF Championship because he apparently had lost his smile and he had developed a dehabilitating knee injury. Now, this has always bothered me for two reasons, this little moment. I'm the first person to jump to Shawn Michaels' defence in a lot of cases, you know. I genuinely believe that he is the greatest in-ring performer there's ever been. You know, that is just... That's just my opinion. If you don't agree with that, if you think it's flair, if you think it's whoever, that's just that's your opinion. You're entitled to that. What bothers me about this is the first one is that the knee injury and the you lost my smile and all that was complete enough to tosh. The reason that he did that is because you know he was booked to lose to Bret Hart at WrestleMania 13. He was scheduled to drop the championship to Bret Hart. I mean, Mr. McMahon said, "You're doing this," and and sure, Michael just went, "No, I'm not." And but, but you can see Vince McMahon was just like, "No, no, no, you are." You don't have a say in this, since I would bollocks to it then. Went away and I think about, ah, oh, yes, yeah, so if I get an injury, you know, vacate the title, don't have to lose it to anybody, don't have to lose to Brett. Brilliant. Now, what, what bothers me about that is that Shawn Michaels these days claims to be a boring and Christian. And the reason this bothers me so much is that in his book, which came out a couple of years ago, he claimed in his book that this was real. That he, his mum had said that he lost his smile and he developed this devastating knee injury. And it's like, you're talking shit, stop lying. Really, born again boy, stop lying. Tell the world what really happened and we'll have a hell of a lot more respect for you than shit like this. But anyway, that's just me. Buy rate from this show is a 0 0.5. The Royal Rumble a month before had, bought, had, had drawn a 0 0.7. Well, of course, that's the Royal Rumble and this was just an in your house. Now, one thing I'd have completely forgotten... Um, before we just before we go on one more thing is that these shows were two hours long and not the standard three for pay-per-views I had completely forgotten that so when there was only five matches in the show I was like what why is there only five let's go on with it then shall we so in the opening contest uh, Mark Merrow defeated Leaf Cassidy in a good opener. Mark Merrow was meant to be um, facing Rock and Maya Villa at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship, but knee injuries fucked that plan royally, didn't it? I mean, it fucked up his career in general, to be honest. I don't think Mark Merrow achieved the level in the WWF that the WWF had planned for him. Shall we say? So, nice start by Miro, who uses technical wrestling and works the arm. Cassidy comes back and starts working the knee. Slingshot leg drop gets two for Miro. Cassidy continues to work the leg, including a spinning leg lock. Match is nice and crisp and lovely, and there's great groundwork, nice psychology, and as you can probably imagine, the fans don't give a fine fuck. Oh, no, they don't. They just sat there, sat on their hands going... Entertain me then, and you know, the rest of you know, the two guys in the ring are doing real nice stuff. You know, which guys, you know, Mirror's working the arm, uh, Cassidy's working the leg. Like I said, that spinning leg lock was beautiful. Don't just don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, Leaf keeps working the leg until he manages to hit a weak looking until sorry until um, until Mirror hits a weak looking insecure. But then Leaf puts on a figure four leg lock to continue working the leg. Um, Leaf comes. Uh, Leaf chases. And then there's one of these bits that just doesn't make our sense because Sable's on the outside with Mark Miro as always. So, so Leaf Cassidy stops working the leg and goes and chases her. 
Sable slaps him. Mero hits a tope. Mero then makes a comeback, which is uh, you know, a little bit of a niggle. He stops selling the knee. And then um, hits a shooting star press, which he does beautifully, instantly. I always remember that Mark Mero, Mark Mero had a beautiful shooting star press. Hits a shooting star press for the win, and then goes back to selling the knee. So, yeah, this is a, a two-star match. Uh, I liked it, and it would have scored higher, but the crowd were not interested in this one in the size. They truly could have cared less about this one. Or as you Americans say, I, he could, they, they could have cared less. It's a scene that doesn't make any sense at all. I could have cared less. I could care less, as they say. Doesn't make sense, Americans. Really doesn't. It's couldn't. If you're saying that I could give a shit, then you're saying that you actually could give a shit. Whereas if you say I couldn't give a shit, it's meaning that you don't care. It's completely different. It's really bad grammar. Anyway, that's my little English lesson over. I went to a posh school, remember that. <laughs> Would never have got away with I could give a shit. Oh man, we get owned. Anyway, <laughs> Farouk, Savio Vega, and uh, Crush, all Nation of Domination members, of course, defeated Flashpunk, Goldust, and Bart Gunn in a mm, not match. This really was a mm, who cares. So the fade is clean house to start, and Flashpunk hits a plancher on the heels. Inside, Farouk hits a nice spine buster on Funk. Funk comes back with a Frankensteiner that gets two on Vega. Bart Gunn tosses Funk at the Nation of Domination, but they catch him and give him beats. This is quite interesting. Literally, Bart Gunn literally went, hey, Funk, wee! But the heels are on the outside, yeah? They grab him, catch him, and just start battering him. That's a nice little moment. Uh, Funk then plays the face in peril, thing ages, including taking a nice bird to belly by Crush. Bart gets the ta tag. He cleans house too, as you can imagine, because it's Bart Gunn. No reaction whatsoever. No one cares anything that he does. He hits a big pass on that gets two. Brawl breaks out, dominates reversed, and Bart with a bulldog off the top. He goes for the cover, but this is the weirdest ring, right? Yeah, he goes for the cover, but Crush comes running over, stands on his head, yeah, fruit rolls him over, the Bart, Bart gun this is, and gets the three count off it. And you're like, wow, that's a bad finish. There were some nice moments in this match, but a lot of it was just me, I don't care. One star, because I'm nice. Next. Rocky Maivir defeated Hunter Hearst Helmsley in a, what I've classed as a nothing match to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Now, if you told me, this is a little, just a little thing, if you'd have told me, it, watching this show, yeah, that in February 1997, that in three years' time, in March 2000, these two would be in the main event headlining WrestleMania, I would have laughed my ass off. Not a fucking chance, I would have said. These two, main event, WrestleMania. No, 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 no. Um, match is on the Rock DVD. Oh, have you hmm, already said that? Match where Rock, Rock wins the belt is on the Rock DVD. I've put it twice in the same review. <laughs> Anyway, basic stuff to start, including a lot, and I mean a lot of arm drags by Rocky. You can tell watching this that Rocky is still very green. Yeah, you know, he's just he's doing nice stuff, but it's so basic. It's stuff you learn on your first wrestling training. You know, it's a hammerlock and it's arm. It's arm. Oh, he must have done five arm drags. Yeah, you know, arm drag into the arm bar. It's like Ricky Steamboat. It's just not as crisp, obviously. But yeah, you know, it, it's not bad by any stretch of imagination. It's just nothing special. Shall we say that? Um. Helmsley takes control with an elbow on the apron, a vertical suplex, and a bloody chin lock, which, as you can probably imagine, the crowd don't care about. Um, he gets two off a high knee and then hits a backbreaker and goes back to the chin lock. So two chin locks in this one match already by Hunter. The match isn't five minutes old yet, and it's like, damn, must be do must be doing this one on purpose. I'm certain of it. They um, this that the second one gets a. A smattering, a smattering, should we say, of Rocky chants, but they're very small. It's like Rocky, Rocky's mum is in the chant, is in the crowd chanting Rocky, and like three people around us start chanting Rocky. You know, it's that, it's that quiet. He goes up top, but gets nailed with a punch to the stomach and hits an atomic drop. He being Rocky, it must be said. He continues the comeback with a power slam and a crossbody for two. Snake Eyes gets two for Hunter, as does a horrific-looking DDT by Rocky. Oh man, does this look bad? It's just. I can't, it's hard to describe. He goes down in the DDT position, but it's like Hunter's about, imagine you know, his arm, yeah, Hunter's head's about that far away from his arm. So he you know, goes down, and, you know, literally there's there's a big piece of air between Hunter's head and the Congress, and you're just like, 
Mmm, that didn't look nice. That really didn't. Marks off for that. Triple H comes back with a face buster and a net breaker for two, but then Goldust comes out. I need to point out, did you notice that I didn't say anything about Goldust in that previous match? Even though he was in the match, there was a couple of big brawls that broke out, and that's where Goldust got, got, in, got involved, but that's about it, really. That's all he did in the match. Yay, go Goldust. Maybe, you can say with hindsight, that he was not used in that match, so they could use him in this one, but he comes out and just distracts him by rubbing himself and showing his ass. That enables uh, Rocky Maivir to hit a bridging back suplex for the win. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the match. That is, the match didn't really do anything for me, it must be said. I mean, it's a one-star match. It might have been a one-and-a-half, one-and-three-quarter star match. But like I say, it was so basic, it was repetitive, and that, that, oh, God, that DDT. If you get a chance, go and have a look at it. It's horrible. It's just horrible. Then, then, we must talk about this. In a, a, a genuinely historical moment, Marlena, of course, come, had come out with Goldust, and she's on the outside, and some fucking enormous woman grabs her and starts choking her out. This woman's in the crowd, by the way. I need to point that out. C choking out. Choking out Marlena. That woman, ladies and gentlemen, will become known as China. This was the first time we ever saw her. So, that's lovely, isn't it? So next... Phil Lafon and Doug Furness defeated the British Bulldog and Owen Hart by disqualification. So Bulldog and Hart remain the champions. I remember Lafon, Lafon, whatever his name is, and Furness being very good. But at the same time, I don't have many ma recollections of matches they were in. Which is uh, not a good thing, is it? Anyway, so Owen and Bulldog were teasing a heel turn at this point. Which has started at the Rumble, which I'm sure you remember when Owen eliminated the British Bulldog. This is a three and a quarter match. In my opinion. So there's nice technical wrestling to start by Owen and Finesse. Beautiful pinning sequence by Owen and Lafont. Uh, Finesse then plays face in peril, including taking a lovely gut wrench suplex by Owen. Backbreak gets two for Owen, but the crowd are super quiet. Oh, they are. Um, the heels hit a nice rocker plex. Do you remember the rocker plex? British Bulldog gets him up in a standard vertical suplex position. Owen Hart comes off the top with a cross body. Into them. Beautiful move. So, so, so goddamn so nice. But then uh, they start arguing. Owen accidentally hits a spin kick on Bulldog, who returns you know, returns the favour with a big clothesline. Crossbody by Lafon gets two finesse hot tags and hits a nice uh, Northern Lights suplex for two, as does a Rana. Some lovely double teaming by the faces culminate in an absolutely stunning DDT. One of those DDT that makes, makes you sit up and goes, good damn! You know, because he land, Owen Hart lands right on the top of his head and the thud that he landed, he was, oh, show that, showing Rocky Maivia how it's done, good and proper. Oh, yes, we like that one. It's a good thing Brock learned how to do the EPs properly, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, it gets two, that's us, the DDT. Uh, Owen hits a perfect insecurity and tags in Bulldog. He goes back, they go back and forth, back and forth with Lafon until Owen grabs one of the say, slammies and, well, he hits Lafon with it and that just, that causes the disqualification, which really made me mad because this match was nice. It was crisp, it was fluid, a bit of psychology, some real nice double team moves, some real nice one man moves. You know, this, this was heading to a three and a half three and three quarter star match maybe if it got another five minutes this could have been a four star match quite happily to give it that finish i was like oh that leaves a bad taste in the mouth doesn't it i understand why they did that finish because like i say owen and bulldog were doing this breakup angle which was meant to be leading to bulldog to face so bulldog's getting in owen's face after the match and arguing and saying why did you do that man why do it because at the end of the day right bulldog had Furness up on his shoulders, ready to hit that running power slam, so he would have got the win. That's the ironic thing. So Bulldog sat there shouting at him, why'd you do that? Why'd you do it? I understand why they did the you know, they, 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 they did that finish. But the match was so good until that point. And you're just like, oh, so that's why I can only give it three and a quarter stars. But hey, it's better than any of the matches on the undercard thus far, isn't it? Anyway. Well, it's good, so it's dry. Very dry, but it's good. So, in the main event, Bret Hart defeated Steve Austin, Undertaker, and Big Van Vader in a four corners elimination match to win the vacant, as I noted before, why it's vacant, <laughs> vacant WWF Championship. Now, this was a good match. This was the best match of the night for definite. Think of this one as a mini rumble match. So, you know, if you go over the top rope, you are eliminated and your feet touch the floor, obviously. But. Pinfalls and submissions both count as well. It's, you know, everyone's a winner sort of rule, isn't it? Um, 
Four men in this match were the last men in the Royal Rumble, which Austin had cheated to win. And just a little trivia for you, and I'm sure a lot of you know this one already, but um, Austin was booked to win this match originally. He suffers a knee injury about halfway through, so they hastily had to rebook the match. And, um, yeah, because at the end, <laughs> whoever was going to win this one was going to be dropping the title to Sid the next night on Raw. Whoever won, it was irrelevant who won. I'm sure Undertaker was like, well, I don't want a 24 hour reign. And Vader was like, I don't want a 24 hour reign. So, so excuse me, Austin obviously couldn't win it. So Brett must have just gone, yeah, fuck it, I'll do it. I'll get another championship. <laughs> the championship reign lasts two, 24 hours. So, shall we go through this one, shall we? So, Vader and Taker squeak, um, they, square, they square off, as do Austin and Hart, which is completely understandable because they're, they're the two fuses that are going on. Uh, Taker hits a clothesline on Vader, then hits the rope walk of death. On Austin, Taker walked into a belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Vader. Uh, Vader eats a chair shot and he blades on camera, but, you know, that could be it, really, but the brrrr of that is it's a manly blade shot. He is pissing blood by, you know, not even five minutes later, you see him brawling, yeah, his whole left-hand side of his face, where you can see it, obviously, because of his mask. It's just blood. And he's got blood all over his left arm, all over his chest. He's squirting out. And it's brilliant. It really adds to the drama of the match. <gasps> wow. Um, Hart is killing Austin, including a backbreaker for two. Chokes on on Vega. Crap looking stunner on Taker gets two. Taker's fault takes it like a neck breaker instead of a proper stunner. Vader walk, works on Brett with a chair as Austin and Taker go out on the outside, including Austin getting back body dropped on the concrete. Austin bashes the steps into Vader's face and drops the steps on his head. And like I say, Vader is bleeding everywhere at this point. He's just gushing out of him. Love it. Austin uses the title belt on Vader before getting crotched by Taker. Austin then um, gets two on Taker with a clothesline off the top. As Vega, for, uh, Vega tries to put on, and successfully actually does put on, a sharpshooter on Bret Hart. And that looks brilliant. It really does. Um, Bret responds by punching Vader. Right, literally, his eye is starting to swell up because he's bleeding so much. So Bret Hart calmly does that. On the, you know, Vader's hanging over the ropes. Literally, Brett just does that right in the eye. Right in his left eye. Nasty stuff. Power driver by Brett on Austin. Vader goes for and misses the moonsault on Taker as Austin and Brett try to eliminate each other. Royal Rumble style I'm sure you know what that means. Holding each other on the top rope sort of thing, you know. <laughs> It goes back and forth for a while. Austin tries to dump out Taker, but Brett just then dumps out Austin, so he is eliminated. Vader takes uh, off his mask as um, Bearer takes out Undertaker with the urn. Bam! Whack! Sharpshooter, but then Taker saves. Stone Cold limps out to beat up Brett some more. Vader, Vader goes for the Vader bomb, but Taker calmly just pushes him off the top rope to eliminate him. So then you've got, so it's, it's Hart, it's Taker, one of them's going to be the champion. And yeah, you've so Austin's on the outside, and basically he just wants to get to Hart. So he keeps getting on the apron and distracting one of them. Distracting, 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 distracting. Um, Taker hits the chokes on. He then goes to the tombstone, but Austin breaks that up. So Taker decks Austin, and then Brett. Yeah, Brett just literally just walks, just calmly as you like, walks up to Taker and close lies him out of the ring to win the match and the championship in about 24 minutes. Match was good, really good. Anyone, the thing about it was is that anyone could have won. All through the match, you weren't thinking, oh yeah, this guy's going to win for definite. You know, any one of them could have won it. Anyone could have won it. I think the only one who I didn't really believe was going to win was Vader. Because at no point did I think to myself, oh yeah, this guy's got it. Especially when he, when he missed the moon. So, bit of blood helps the drama. Some real Really nice action, and yeah, I've got no problem giving this one four stars at all. No problem whatsoever. <sighs> While there was nothing on the undercard to write home about, dear mum, I watched a show that was really good. <laughs> um, it was there was nothing particularly inspiring, but let's put it this way: no half star or dud matches. The worst matches were one star matches, so there was nothing particularly bad, like really offensively bad. And bear in mind, like I said at the top of this vid, it's a two hour show. So yeah, for five matches, two of which were very, very good, you know, you can't really go wrong with this show. So I would happily give it a seven out of ten. But the problem is with this one is the crowd. The crowd didn't seem to like or want to see anyone. There was very virtually no heat for anyone who was getting in the ring. You know, it was only the big stars who got pops, and they got pops on their entrance, and that was really about it. 
you know? Everyone on the undercard was like, it was like they were non-existent, yeah? So if, just for that, if nothing else, this one gets a point taken off it. Because I reckon that the matches that were one star, like Hunter of Sam's versus Rocky My Via, would have been so much better if it had some crowd noise behind it. So for those reasons, I'm going to give this show a massive 6 out of 10. Now, bear in mind, that does, probably doesn't sound too great, but we gave the WWF Royal Rumble 1997 2 out of 10. So it's quite a markup. Do you not think, ladies and gentlemen, I, the next episode of 97 Heaven we're going to do is WCW Super Brawl 7. And of course, the next one from the WWF will be WrestleMania 13, which I've got to say I'm really not looking forward to. I've been Mark P. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think down here, and I will see you all very soon. Take it easy, guys.